Today I'm going to be looking at cellular backhaul types. So in other words, how a cell site offloads its data onto the operator's core network in order to say handle calling, texting and data. Now these can broadly be split into two categories, wireless and fixed line. And these two categories can be further subdivided again so wireless backhaul can be kind of split into off-air backhaul such as microwave and on-air where the mast kind of almost uses say 4G to connect to another mast. Then there's fixed line connectivity where the mast will use an underground cable and this is split into basically fiber based and copper based and obviously the fiber based technologies offer higher speeds. So the going back to the wireless based provision, microwave is the most common out of these, in fact potentially even the most common out of all the different backhaul types. So microwave link basically uses high frequency spectrum, typically above 5 gigahertz all the way up to potentially about 60 gigahertz. Um, use it in order to transfer the data. Now microwave is line of sight only due to the high frequencies and is capable of up to about 40 kilometers distance without too much trouble. Data speeds for a single link vary between about 10 megabit per second and 1 gigabit although the links can frequently be duplexed to provide say up to 2 gigabit per second each way. So more than fast enough for sort of your fairly average site I would say. I mean that's certainly fast enough for a sort of 1800 megahertz 4G site and even more so for an 800 megahertz 4G site. The trouble with microwave and the reason it's usually associated with slow sites is that in rural areas you don't just have one microwave site say connecting to a tower with fibre on it. You have a whole load of microwave sites all connected onto each other so you can have say 10 or 15 sites effectively potentially only sharing one microwave link and therefore the capacity at each site is quite limited and hence speed can suffer and also the other reason microwave is associated to be slow is because some of the older sites that use it are using microwave links which are about as fast as smoke signals so not really capable for today's data demands the other form of wireless technology that I stated is kind of on air. So you have a mast in say a village which then picks up a 4G signal from another mast, um, a much sort of bigger mast in say an urban area. Now this only works obviously if you've got a situation where the area that needs covering already has a sort of weak signal from another mast. So it's almost acting like a TV relay. Now. Another reason this isn't typically used is that all those customers on that small village mast are all, in, are all in effect sharing one sort of 4G data link that sort of one phone would normally have with that other mast. And okay, they can prioritise the data that small mast gets compared to say, a normal handset on the big tower, but even so, you're looking at maybe 100, 150 megabit per second of capacity max, so it's less than a microwave link. But of course, the lower frequency that the 4G uses compared to the microwave link means it doesn't have to necessarily be line of sight, which is the other reason that this sort of on-air method has been trialled by EE. So then we go on to the fixed connectivity options. So like I said, the most common one used nowadays, I think, is probably fibre because it's fast especially very very fast compared to the copper options that we used previously so the fiber is as fast as pretty much the light and the way you modulate the light down the fiber so it's typically in 100 meg 1 gig 10 gig and 100 gig circuits now as far as i know most masks or certainly masks that are being fiber now are typically on one gigabit minimum but some are getting 10 gig especially the big sites that potentially have a load of microwave ones all connected onto them as well and also the 2600 megahertz uh, sites which also potentially do carry aggregation as well tend to have 10 gigabit per second um, so fiber is definitely kind of the way forward and the providers are fibering up more masks because if nothing else it provides future proofing 
because the microwave links okay can do two gigabit per second which in many cases is more than fast enough for today but as data use go rises then potentially that microwave link might not be quite adequate and i guess the final option that i stated was copper fixed line and the speeds of this again depend on what specific variant they use but typically it's t1 or e1 circuits a T1 circuit provides up to 1.5 megabit per second and an E1 is just over 2 megabits per second. So as you can probably tell that's not very much capacity at all. So if you think uh, the latest generation of 3G tech can do in theory 42 megabit per second over DCH's DPA so that's more than 20 times what an E1 carrier can use. So you'll generally find E1 or T1 on quite old 2G sites that were that are in sort of towns, but again, they're very, very rapidly being migrated onto fibre lines, or in some cases, high-speed microwave, because the E1 and T1 circuits just aren't capable nowadays.